This sandbar was the result of the tidal changes created by the building of the Cape Island Causeway. Sand migrated from all the beaches in the immediate area. This area of Cape Island is called Northeast Point. By the way Cape Island is short for Cape Sable Island. Shown are the remains of the old ferry terminal. This is Clam Point. There are two secluded crescent beaches here. Most people are not aware that these beautiful beaches even exist. That's too bad. Another hidden gem is Cripple Creek. Shown here on a beautiful sunny day. This side of the island gets less fog. And as a result is much more sunny. A nice safe haven for lots of Cape Islanders. Shown here tied up at the Cripple Creek Wharf. You could spend an entire day on these beaches and probably not get disturbed. This is the Stony Island Beach, a great favorite for dog walking or just a quiet place to rest. Also a great place to go for a stroll, or maybe a rigorous jog. Maybe not so quiet, but lots of fun. As you can see, all-terrain vehicles are very popular along the Stony Island Beach. Here we see the Southside Beach which is just south of and not far from the beach at Stony Island. Just off the main highway is the road leading to Daniel's Head. Located here is the Southside Wharf and a local fish processing plant. Also you will find some old but picturesque fishing piers many falling into disrepair. A small fleet of Cape Islanders call this their home. This is Clark's Harbor, a small but prosperous fishing town, and with a population of less than 1,000, it doesn't seem much bigger than its neighboring villages. This is the main town wharf, originally named the Kenny Wharf, but there are two others, a small one at Swims Point and a much larger one at West Head. The Kenny Wharf, located in the center of town, was the main wharf, up until the 1970s, when West Head became more prominent. All the Cape Islanders here are fully loaded with lobster traps and ready for setting them on dumping day, the most important day of the year.
Seen here is a view of Cape Sable, locally known as just the Cape. This view is taken from above the Swims Point Wharf. The wharf here is quite small but nonetheless important to the local economy. A busy fish plant is located here as well. Westhead is the location of the largest fishing operation on Cape Island. It is also the newest, having grown to its present size over the past 40 years. The Canadian Coast Guard vessel, the Clarks Harbour, is stationed here. The first Coast Guard coastal rescue vessel, the 101, was originally stationed at the Kenny Wharf. Newelton is home to the Orion Wharf and boasts a fleet of Cape Islanders. A unique aspect of Newelton is that it is also the location of the first lobster pound on Cape Island. The Hawk is the most southerly inhabited landmass in Nova Scotia. Only the Cape, which is uninhabited, is further south. It is technically an island, separated from Cape Island by the Guzzle. Actually, the Hawk is on about the same latitude as northern Spain. The beach at the Hawk is one of the most popular and easily accessible by car. This is the Cape, with the Cape Lighthouse standing at 101 feet, or 30.8 meters high, making it the tallest in Canada. 
It is located on the most southerly point of land in Nova Scotia. Only Point Pelee in southern Ontario is further south in all of Canada. This is a south-looking view of the cape taken from above the hawk. This area, to the west of the lighthouse, is known as the Ratcliffe Hills. In the distance is Fish Island with Fish Inlet flowing between it and the Ratcliffe Hills. Dozens of sand dunes and an excellent camping and picnic beach are located here. Every summer, when the weather is best, many locals and visitors alike set up camp along this spectacular strip of sand. In 1988, the Canadian government designated the Cape Sable Lighthouse as a National Historic Site. The Light Tower is a classified federal heritage building because of its historical associations and its architectural and environmental values. The Light Tower is a very good illustration of an important aid to navigation around the tip of Nova Scotia and marks the entrance into the Bay of Fundy. This small clump of stunted trees is locally known as the forest. You're not likely to get lost here, but it's a great birding site. Let's take a drone flight from the lighthouse for a 3-kilometer trip to the beautiful Ratcliffe Hills. This is basically a narrow sandbar with a few rock outcrops, one is known as Black Point which is about halfway along the flight.
As the sun sets in the west, let us say a fond farewell to a unique and historical patch of rock and sand. A truly beautiful place in our universe. This video is dedicated to the hard-working and good people of Southwest Nova.